Hello students, this is Nathan Bryan from the Digital Monkey School, and this is lecture number five of Beginner's Class to Maya. So if you remember from our last session, I s helped you set up a character and give it the ability to move. The next stage is going to be to give it textures, lighting, and give it a basic scene so that we can render it out when we're done. To start, we're going to create a cube. We want to use the inside of this cube to make our scene. So we're going to scale it up, right click and hold for face, select faces for two sides and the top and hit delete. We can move it up so that the ground level is the same as the grid. So that's what he's going to be walking on. And now we're going to give it some textures. So let's come over here. Uh, as you remember from our last session, we had our outliner open. We're now going to switch to our hyper shade and perspective. So I'll click this. Get rid of the lower half just by dragging the center down. This is what we're going to be using, the hyper shade. The hypershade has three nodes in it when you first open it up. These are your basic nodes, and they sort of are added to any object you put into the scene. We want to create new nodes with their own colors. We don't want to use these. So we're going to start by creating a Lambert. So Lambert is right here. Uh, let's create three of them, one for skin color, one for shirt color, and one for pants. So we have our, our beginner one, one that we're not using, and we have three colors that we're going to be switching out. Now to remember when adding textures, we want to go from the root down to the children. So we don't want to do the head first and then come back and do the root because then we'll lose all the texture information on the head. So let's start with the genes because the genes are going to be, you know, with the root. So let's, with it selected, we're going to right click on them on one of the materials and say assign material to selected. As you can see, nothing has changed. That's because the color is the exact same as Lambert one. Double click on it and it'll open up attributes for it, for the Lambert. One of those attributes is color here, and we got a little box that we can double click on, or just click, and it gives you color options. So go ahead and move things around until you have blue jeans color. Okay. So you can see that the character updated live and now is blue jeans, the entire thing. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do the shirt, since the arms and the legs and the head, or the arms and the head are separate from the torso, um, but still children, we're going to do the torso first. So clicking on the parent there, we're going to right click on one of the other Lamberts we created and assign material to selected. Click on it, uh, the attributes open for it, and we can change the color. Let's do a green color. Lighter or darker, lighter or darker. Let's go for lighter. So now we have jeans and a shirt. We can do the arms and head next. So select all of them, you holding down shift. Right click on the last Lambert that you created and assign material to select it. Click on it, change the colors just like you have previously. Okay, so now we have skin color. So there's our basic character. The next stage is going to be adding shadows. So if you remember, seven or six is sh shadows. We're going to create a light. 
create lights. Let's do a spotlight. They're the easiest to learn and good for this beginner class. They also have amazing shadows. So we're going to stick with this for right now. So we have this light in. It's kind of hard to like set up in the right position. You can move it around like any object, but it's hard to tell exactly what the light's going to hit. Uh, seven shows you where the shadows are. You can sort of see it, but it's not exact. So we want to get something a little more precise. So with the light selected, we're going to go through panels, look through selected. This allows us to move it around like any camera. I'm just going to set it into a place where it's covering it. And it gives us options in the attributes for cone angle and penumbra angle. These two are kind of important. Cone angle allows you to you know, make the amount that is, li that is lighting a bit larger. But it, in the final render, it'll have a hard edge right there, which is what the penumbra angle is for. This gives you a drop off of light. And go back to perspective view by hitting panels, perspective, perspective. I'm going to look at this and we're going to do a quick render. The three clapper boards up here give you like sample renders and the rendering settings. So we're going to click this first one here. And it'll bring up this window and you can see where how the light drop off looks. If I were to turn off the penumbra angle, put it back to zero, and do a render, you can see it's a hard line now. So we want a bit of a penumbra. It can be in either direction, into the negatives or the positives, and it'll look about the same. So now we come in here, we look at the render, and you can see that we've got a dark side and a light side, but we don't have a shadow laying on the ground. So to do that, we're going to go into our light settings, the attributes, and hit shadows here. We're going to use depth map shadows. So click that on. Resolution 1024, filter size 4. The 1024 is to make sure that it's not that much pixelation. And the filter size makes that sure that the drop-offs of the shadow are clean instead of jaggedy. So when I render now, you can see a shadow on the ground. We've got the character. And now all we have to do is animation and render. And that'll be in my next session. So I will see you all guys later.